All right. Hi, everyone. How are you all doing today? I hope you've all been hanging tight and staying safe at home. My name is Jolly Osiris, and I'd like to welcome you all to Google Pride Conversations. If you want to be part of this conversation, all you have to do is use the hashtag Pride with Google. Again, that's hashtag Pride with Google on all your social media. Now, our celebration this year is going to be a little bit different. We can't, you know, we're uh, in an ongoing battle against COVID-19, so we're not able to go out and march with our LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters. Uh, but there are other ways of celebrating and uh, helping our uh, brothers and sisters talk about their inclusivity and equality. And so um, one of them is, of course, having these uh, conversations that you're about to hear today. So I'm very, very honored to have a super cool, super awesome set of panelists joining me uh, for this afternoon. Uh, they come from many different backgrounds, super diverse, and uh, I think they're all going to be inspirational in many, many different ways. So let's get to meet each of them. This is Pride Conversations, and our very first guest is the first ever transgender woman elected in Antipolo City, who now serves as a Barangay Kagawad in Barangay Mayamot. She also founded two organizations in support of the LGBTQ plus community, Trans Pinay of Antipolo Organization, or TAO, and Bayamot LGBTQ and Youth Advocates, or Balaya. On top of that, uh, uh, she's also pursuing her passion for pageantry and fashion, and she's also a mom to a beautiful daughter. Let's welcome Christine Ibardulaza. Hello, everyone. Mabuhay. Happy Pride. <laughs> I see the pageant background. I love it. Hi, Thank Christine. You, Christine. Hello. Up next, also with us today, as you may, you may know her as a personal fitness trainer, an entrepreneur, the drummer of the band Flying Epis, and the founder of the all-girls bike uh, group Litas of Manila. She's also a YouTube moto vlogger. Her name is Gaki Moto. I just subscribed to her just before this. We have Gaki Azurin. Hey, hello. Hey, Good Gak. afternoon, y'all. Hey, Gaki. Hello. Hey, Gaki. I'm a subscriber 59.2K. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> <So. laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Google's program manager and active member of Pride at Google who continues to use her voice to help repel LGBTQ plus causes forward. Please welcome Ms. Melai Lopez. Hi, everyone. Hi, Melai. Happy Pride. Happy, Happy Pride. last day of Pride. <laughs> I know. Okay, uh, our next speaker is Canadian-born Pinoy international musician, comedian, actor, content creator, and online personality. So many slashes. Uh, we <laughs> all know him for his Filipino-themed YouTube videos. We have Mr. Mikey Bustos. Wow. Hello, everybody. Mabuhay. Hi, Mikey. Hi, Mikey. Hi, guys. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. And last but not least, of course, uh, with us today is a proud trend who started her transition journey in her early years in college at Ateneo de Manila University. She is now a plastic reconstructive and aesthetic surgery fellow at the Southern Philippines Medical Center while on her way to pursue training in gender reassignment surgery. Please welcome Dr. Betty Berinha. Hello, Dr. everyone. Hello. Hi, awesome. happy Pride. Happy Bye -bye. Pride. So this is our fantastic uh, set of panelists today. Very, very happy to have you. Now, I, I, I just gave all your fancy schmancy introductions, but now you get to introduce yourselves your own way. So remind our audience today, again, what your name is, uh, what you do, uh, what you identify as, and most importantly, uh, what pronouns you would like me to use in referring to you throughout today's program. Okay, so let's begin once again with uh, Christine. Go ahead. Hello, everyone, once again. I'm Christine T. Bardulaza. I came from the land of the White Sand Beach, Boracay, but now I'm living here in Antipolo City wow. as a Barangay Councilor of Barangay Mayamot, Antipolo City. And I'm the first ever trans woman elected in the position. And I'm also an LGBT advocate. In 2006, I founded Trans Pinay of Antipolo Organization, which caters the needs and livelihood of our LGBTQ plus members and of course when i was elected in 2018 i founded uh, malaya which is mayamot lgbt and youth advocates this is actually for our barangay only and of course aside from that i'm a public servant by day 
a dressmaker at night. Wow. But I'm a full-time wow. mom to wow. a seven-year-old beautiful doctor. She's watching like, hi, Tintin. Hi, and Tintin. that's it. And I would like hi, you Tintin. to call, yes. I would like you to address me with more feminine pronouns, she or her. And you just call me Mom Christine. Ma'am Christine, you got it. And hi, Tintin. I'm sure you're very proud of your mom. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's go next to Gaki. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm Gaki Moto because my name is Gaki. And um, I'm a fitness trainer by day. I'm a musician by night. And I run an industrial cleaning business the rest of the time. But I seem to be more popularly known as a moto vlogger. So hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Ding. That's right. <laughs> and I like to be, <laughs> my preferred pronoun is she or her. Yeah. Very nice. Already subscribed. So you guys, you mm -hmm. know what to do. Uh huh. Up next, we have Melai. Go ahead, Melai. Hi, everyone. I'm Melai Lopez. I'm a program manager in the network deployment team at Google. Um, I've been with Google for more than a year now. Um, I was born and raised in Cagayan de Oro, the city of golden friendship and the land of Pia Wurzbach. Um, wow. I'm a trans wow. woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and go I go by feminine pronouns, she and her. Very nice. Okay, let's go to Mikey next. Yeah. Um, hi, guys. I'm Mikey Bustos. I'm a Filipino-Canadian. I migrated to the Philippines in 2011. And um, I'm a pet lover. So in case you hear like random animal sounds off screen, <laughs> I apologize. I have wildlife like on the side. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, I identify as bisexual and I identify as a male. So uh, he and him is fine. Very nice. We just heard your dog, actually. Did you? Yeah, actually, that was my parrot. He was quite loud. My parrot pretending oh. to be my dog. Oh, wow. That's Ligaya. Is that okay. That's Ligaya, yeah. Oh, I love oh. Ligaya. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Uh, last but not least, we have Doc Berry. Go ahead. Hi, Jolly. Hello, everyone. Uh, may, just, may I just say, Marina Hapon to all my family and friends watching from Beagle, where I came from. And wow. also... Maayong hapon to all my friends who are watching here from Davao City. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, my name is Barry Barinha. I'm currently a third year plastic reconstructive and aesthetic uh, fellow at Southern Philippines Medical Center. I do plan to pursue subspecialty training and gender reassignment in the future and hopefully offer the service here in our country. I am a trans woman. And I've been on transition since I was in pre-med, so I would like to be, um, I would like female pronouns when referring to me. Or you can simply call me Barry. Okay, good. We're actually going to talk about that uh, transition journey a bit later on. Yeah. So uh, thanks to all of you. Very, very happy to have you guys uh, here today. Now, uh, first thing we're going to do today, I know you guys have all been asked to uh, bring with you an item that represents your journey as a mm -hmm. part of this community. So. What I'm gonna what, I, what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is to uh, bring out that item, tell us a little bit more about it, and tell us what role or how it symbolized uh, your journey in the LGBTQ community. So let's uh, go to Christine again, Miss Christine or Ma'am Christine. What's yes, your item? Yes, Johnny. Yes. Okay. For the information of everyone, I'm a dressmaker by profession. I make beautiful gowns, costumes, wedding gowns, and even personal protective equipment. And the most significant for me, I believe, is that when I personally made a very, very huge um, LGBT flag there, but I have, oh. I have here, I made here uh, a little version of that. Yeah. Very nice. Super haba. I think it's 30 yards. So napakahaba. Wow. Mano mano ko siyang tinahe. And wow. that for me is very significant because I am not only... Um, expressing my love to my job as a dressmaker but one by one the colors i'm making is to raise the flag of the lgbt people so that's why it's very significant so raise our flag <laughs> very nice very catchy on a gray of you very catchy uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you for that let's go to gaki um i have with me here um my helmet 
Uh, it's Ooh. just it just symbolizes like you know my motorcycle group. Um, we're a female motorcycle group, and I guess it's memorable to me because that's how I met my girlfriend, and it started my journey in the LGBT community. Uh, she is my first um, same-sex relationship, so there we go. It's yeah. Aww. Memorable. Oh, very nice. Memories, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's badass too. So yeah, yeah. It's right. I safe. was I was gonna say it feels like you're gonna like go through a ring of fire in a motorcycle with it. That's awesome. Yeah, right. And get <laughs> shot out of a cat. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, right next, uh, let's go to Melai. What is your item? Item Melai. All right. Um, I'm showing you this fabulous choker. Um, it's a gift for my dad from a few years ago. Um, it's it's really beautiful, um, and the reason why I'm showing you this is because this really represents um, the support that I received from my family throughout my whole journey. Um, I really believe that part of the reason why I, ha I have been able to um, focus on my work, and, which in turn has allowed me to excel in the workplace, is that I don't have to worry about my family um, on top of everything else that I have to face during my transition and in this entire journey. So um, I recognize that some people are not as fortunate um, yeah. to have a supportive family. Um, so I really treasure this. I love this. Very love nice. This choker. Yes. And, and claps to your family as well for being really supportive of your journey. Uh, let's go to Mikey next. What's your item, Mikey? Okay, so my item was a gift from a subscriber. Um, his name was is Richard uh, Alford. Um, he had this artwork made of myself and my current boyfriend, who is also my manager, who's been my manager for uh, uh, seven, almost eight years. And that's how long we've been dating too. Um, for me, it represents my journey because, well, you know, when, before coming out last year, I had thought, you know, my subscribers would be really disappointed. Um, it would change everything. I'd lose my support. But actually, no. <laughs> the, the subscribers made fan art. They were so supportive. And in the background, you see like a farm. It's actually a parody of American Gothic painting. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Arjun, Arjun and I's farm is at the back and there's my parrot. And um, it just really was a nice token of um, or a symbol, rather, of the support out there for for us um, after we came out. Very nice. I'm actually looking through the comments, and some people are saying uh, uh, hi to the Babu High Squad. The Mabu High Squad, Mabu yes. High Squad. Yes, you guys know this. You see that? All the right. High Squad, yeah. <laughs> it's gone. Um, also, also in the comments, uh, some people, a lot of people, are very happy that we have uh, bisexual and trans representation in the panel today. So, uh, speaking of, let's go to uh, Doc Berry. Uh, what is your item? So, I brought with me. Um, this is a. You can see it. This is a fancy blade holder, which I got from my parents way back. Actually, when my father was still alive, um, and as a surgeon, I think this is one of the most important items that we have to have whenever we do our surgeries. Uh, for me, this blade symbolizes two things. Uh, first is number one, the love for the profession, which I think I got partly from my parents because my father is a doctor and my mom is a nurse by profession. And early on, I was exposed to the field, um, which made me felt passionate for it. And secondly, uh, just like Malai, I think this, is, this also represents the all out support I got, I got from my family, especially my parents. And in all endeavors that I undertook, my transitioning, um, going through med school, I mean, it's hard. But that support gave me courage and uh, to take risk and succeed in my battles. And I am where I am now, I think, because of them. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Barry. You know, we're only about 15 minutes in. I'm already, like, super inspired by, by all these different <laughs> stories. Now, we're, gonna really gonna, we're really going to deep dive now into your respective fields and what you guys do. Uh, so let's go first to Ma'am Christine. Now, um, I'm going to be asking all of you this, but I really want to find out, you know, um, basically what your field is about. Tell us about uh, the profession you, you entered and what kind of challenges did you have to overcome uh, in your respective fields, right? So it feels like a Miss Universe question. So Miss Christine, tell us about your field. And what is the biggest challenge you've had to overcome? 
Okay, so before I entered politics, I was a trans beauty pageant winner during my mm -hmm. younger years. Uh -huh. And I am the, I was the livelihood section head of the city government of Antipolo, which caters livelihood trainings of TESDA and TESDA programs for the 16 barangays here in our city. In 2018, I was asked by the barangay captain of Barangay Mayamot to join his lineup. At first, I am very excited, but as the campaigns goes on, uh, my heart beats faster and faster because I don't know what will be the reception for me of the madlam people, you know. <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung paano nila tatanggapin na isa ang trans woman na katulad ko ay tatakbo sa election because here in Antipolo, simply the the man and the woman, yun na nakikita nila eh. So hmm. first time nila na out, trans woman na tatakbo. So kapadong kapado ako. But then I prayed so hard and I showed them who I am. Sabi ko, tatakbo ako, hindi ako magpapagupit ng buhok, hindi ako magmumukhang lalaki, mm. hindi ako magpre-pretend na lalaki. I will show to them who I am. And luckily, they embrace my personality and I won. And kaakibat nun is, syempre, kailangan ko maging responsible because this open doors to my trans sisters na, ah, pwede pala. Pwede pala na ang trans woman like me could run in an office and could do an ordinances in a barangay levels, especially in the grassroots. And I overcome that by simply being myself. And yun, tinanggap nila ako kung sino at ano ako nang walang pag-aalinlangan. Very nice. Magaling. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Christine. What about you, Gaki? I mean, I think people might have a misconception or uh, an idea that, you know, parang uh, uh, motorbiking, uh, especially vlogging about it, might be a sort of male-dominated profession, but has that been the case? And uh, how have you overcome any challenges in that field? Yeah, I think there is that um, misconception. And like, you know, like if I get any uh, rude comments, it's all, wala kang alam sa motor. <laughs> or like, <laughs> they don't, <laughs> well, it's, it's okay, you know, or like um, that I don't know how to handle a motorcycle or things like that, you know, but... I don't think it's it has anything to do with my gender. So, um, getting into moto vlogging, basically, it was just something that I did because I wanted to show the Philippines to my friends in other countries. So I just started the vlog, and I was told that I talk too much anyway. So I just put a camera on my helmet, started the moto vlog without having to think that you know that it's a male dominated anything so basically just went for it and you know like when i cover a lot of motorcycle events i'm usually one of the few females there but that doesn't change you know a lot of people still go to my vlog when they need advice on motorcycles so go for it <laughs> yeah. very nice Thank and you. how do you how do you address the doubters like if if anyone's like surprised by it do you do anything to disprove their uh, misconceptions just keep on doing my vlog and you know like um i am the one riding the big bike so yeah that's right <laughs> i can't really say anything yeah <laughs> exactly and i'm the one i'm the one weaving through traffic here so it's okay <laughs> yeah. perfect thank you gaki let's go to melai mm -hmm. what about you tell us about uh your your program uh program manager uh tell us what, what this profession is about and what are the challenges to this profession for you um, okay, so as program manager, I am in charge of um, the, the work that we outsource to our suppliers. So I do contract management for the vendors, um, budget management, risk and compliance, so all those things. Um, yeah, I started um, in this line, I started in this line of work. Um, as early as my BPO days. So that's where I originally came from. Um, I was a project manager in the BPO industry for, um, I guess, around 10 years. Um, there were similarities to what I was doing um, back then. I also was managing, um, to a certain extent, contracts and budgets, as well as risk and compliance. Um, my former manager, um, one who, 
whom I worked with more than 10 years ago. Um, he referred me to a role in Google, which is this role that I'm occupying now. Um, he is now my manager. Um, they were looking for someone nice. who had experience in reporting and analytics, um, spend management, contract management, risk and compliance. Um, so again, I had all of that experience. So um, I'm fortunate to have gotten this, um, this job. Um, in terms of the challenges in my current work, um, I, I'd have to say that I've never had to worry about feeling included here in Google. Um, yeah. I work in a team of um, incredibly supportive individuals and even the team of the Philippines, they've likewise been truly wonderful. Um, I guess um, for the challenge that I'm facing now, I guess it would just be the adjustments that I have to make um, to be able to balance my core responsibilities and the work that I get myself involved in um, in the employee resource groups within Google. So we have groups like um, Pride at Google and Trans at Google. Um, I want to be able to participate in activities that will last beyond Pride Month. So I really need to find that balance. Right, and we'll actually deep dive into those activities a bit later on. So we'll go now to Mikey, what about you? Um, yeah, I'm, uh, so, uh, there are many challenges as a YouTuber. I mean, I'm sure you guys, Gaki, might be able to relate. But one of the biggest challenges as it relates to what we're talking about, it was my lifestyle vlog. So when we were traveling, my partner and I, like we're like Siamese twins. We go everywhere together. We're, we never separate. And we never address Aww. We never, we never address <laughs> the vlog. Like, you know, we're, we're dating. It was, it was more like, like he's my best friend and like it, people would notice they're like, Oh, you guys share food, meals sometimes, or there's only one bed in the hotel room when you travel and we would just never address it. And it was always like the hardest thing. It was so much work. And a lot of times we had to hide certain things while we were vlogging and, and adjust how we were telling the story. Um, so that was kind of like a big challenge. And then essentially coming out after was the biggest like jump from the both of us, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was challenging to be hiding it from everyone for such a long time. It was, so you were dating for like six, seven years before, before you announced it, right? Was it? <laughs> yes, yeah. So, I mean, wow. it was years of just not addressing it. Like we accepted that maybe people assume um, yeah. People asked, uh, uh -huh. but we, we just never addressed it. It was kind of a weird situation for the longest time. Right. But you did say that one, once you did, you were, were you surprised by how positive the general reaction was? Oh yeah. Like outpouring of love. Like we, we were expecting to lose endorsements, um, you know, lose subscribers, because, you know, uh, uh, just we were afraid of upsetting others. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a strange thing. Um, but no, it was just really wonderful. We, it opened us up to a whole community of allies and the LGBT community. And it was just wonderful. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. Last but not least, let's go to Doc Barry. What about, Hi, tell uh, us about your profession. Yeah. Yeah. As I've mentioned, um, I'm currently in subspecialty training in plastic reconstructive and aesthetic surgery. So basically, it's a wide spectrum of specialized surgeries wherein we deal with improving the form and the function of the human body. So, well, alam natin, I think common surgeries that we do would be aesthetic. So lahat ng pagpapaganda would, be, would include right. patangos ng ilong, you have um, the thyroplasty for your eyelids, breast augmentation, liposuction, yeah, we do that all. But aside from that, actually, we're also doing reconstructive surgery. So, um, for example, like if you have uh, uh, like a traumatic um, accident or probably a cancer surgery wherein they leave a very big defect on your body, come in reconstruct non. Like, for example, like breast cancer surgery, if the one boob is removed, we try to recreate another boob which is actually wow. good for the patient. Yeah, it, it's good for your self-esteem and their recovery. What, what made me decide 
to go into the, uh, this field to be a doctor is actually the sheer interest that I developed for the profession early on. As I've said, bata pa lang ako, I was re- already exposed to the to the workings of a doctor through my dad and my mom. And it was really not a hard choice uh, for me when I decided to go into pre-med. Uh, but yeah. growing up, while transitioning, that's a different story. So, Shampre, you, you get to have developed new interest. So, yeah, before I used to sketch and sew. Now I can do that, but with skin, it's morbid. <laughs> but, yeah. Now, uh, so, parang, uh, I, I tap into my artistic side um, while transitioning. I also developed the love for cosmetic, makeup, and beauty. I think all the trans women can, um, almost all trans women can relate to that. And you know the power that it can harness to transform someone. And I think that is, um, that is also the reason why uh, uh, it was logical for me to choose a career path that would be transformative. And for me, that would be plastic surgery. And even on the first day of med school, actually, I already envisioned myself to be a plastic surgeon. Um, yeah. When it comes to the challenges now um, for the field, I think, I think now that we're in a COVID-19 pandemic, I experience the same challenges as any uh, uh, doctor in training uh, currently um, battling now. I mean, uh, we were supposed to, uh, we're, we are supposed to comply to a number of cases that we have to do in a year. Currently, medyo um, matumal because we cannot do elective surgeries right now as compared right. before. Yeah. But when it comes to challenges being a trans woman in the field, I don't have such problems. Uh, I don't have that kind of problem now because the subspecialty I am in, which is plastic surgery, is very uh, open and very mm. um, it's celebrating diversity, actually. Because yes. part, of, part of the work we do is we are, we are very um, uh, in touch with the LGBTQ community, actually, because we have lots of patients who are from the LGBTQ community. So I would say that the plastic surgeons are actually more, um, kumbaga, they are very um, uh, learned when it comes to SOGI, when it comes to uh-huh. relating to our issues. But uh, coming in to, because before you have to go to subspecialty training, I have to go to general surgery training first. Yeah. And that is a different um, sub, that is a different group. I mean, in the, in the medical society, when you talk about surgery, it's a very macho, it's a very mm. masculine specialty. And so uh, before, some people were actually asking if I'm ready for it because I love mm. to do uh, surgery. So when I was trying to enter into the uh, residency training for general surgery, I have to prove myself worthy because simply because I am a trans woman, and as a matter of fact, when I was um, interviewed for the post, there are some consultants who are actually uh, upfront objecting to accepting me in the program. Yeah, that's the, that's the reality. I mean, they're just um, basing it on the fact that I'm a trans woman. But then again, I was accepted because um, a lot of the other consultants were actually for me, knows me personally, and they don't judge me for what I am. So I was accepted and I took it as a challenge to prove them wrong. That um, one way to overcome their um, biases, actually, is to just working hard, putting my heart into what I do, and people will see the integrity eventually and give me the respect that they thought I won't get just by being a trans woman. All right, you showed them. Yeah. All right, yeah. very nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nice. So thank you guys. Yeah, Doc right. Barry. On, yes, yes. Doc Barry, I will trust my body to you. Of course. <laughs> oh, there you go. You've got a patient. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Please. we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna deep dive a little bit now into uh, into each of your work. Uh, let's go back to Christine for a bit. Um, I know one of the biggest challenges of people in the public service industry now is really the whole battle against COVID-19. So how has the LGBTQ community in, in Antipolo, in your barangay, actually helped you in your, your COVID-19 uh, efforts? 
Okay, during this pandemic talaga of coronavirus, uh, talagang LGBT people is no excuse in the virus. Wala naman tayong mga shield. Hindi kami mga superhero na para hindi tamaan na corona. But the very struggle, especially in my part, nasa grassroots kami, di ba? So kami talaga ang nagdi-deal ng mga programa ng national level. So... I would like to shout out sa lahat ng mga nakasama kong LGBTQ plus members ng aming barangay na nagtulong gabi-gabi sa pag ng mga food packs para sa aming constituents. There are so many sleepless nights. In fact, I think two weeks consecutive of packing for 35,000 families in our barangay. Can wow. you just imagine? Yes. Oh, very nice. And syempre, ang mga normal na babae talaki may mga family yan. So they would um, aalis sila ng barangay ng mga 5 to 6 p.m. At ang natitira ay ang mga LGBTQ plus na kung saan ginagawa namin masaya ang gabi na hindi namin nararamdaman yung pagod sa pagriripak ng anim na kilong bigas, wow. anim na sardinas, anim na noodles, ipapak mo isa-isa, tapos ilalagay mo na naman sa sako. And then lupay-pay kami lahat. So talaga namang <laughs> I salute them, the efforts na ginawa nila. And I would like also to mention, um, um, a friend of mine, Miss Farren Lankova, who is a sister to me, um, she makes a uh, beautiful mask and PPE, and we donate it to hospital. Wow. So, nakakatuwa lang na talaga na mga LGBT people, especially in fashion field, helps also during this pandemic. Pero nice talaga na mga, it's a team effort. Hindi ka kayanin yes. ng isa lang. So, sama sa And talagang saludo po ako sa resilience ng mga LGBT. Hindi ko sila nakitaan ng pagod. Sa katawan nila bagsak. Pero ang mga mata nila is super vibrant because nakakatulong sila in small little ways. And I would like also to salute our members in Transpinay of Antipolo Organization. We also extend our efforts by haircut services. Yan. Shout out kay AJ Madrigal. Ayan, talaga namang <laughs> nagpupunta sa mga hospitals. Libre gupet, isang gunting, suklay, gupet, libre para sa mga frontliners natin. And by having said that, talaga namang naging visible ang LGBTQ plus community dito sa Antipolo during this pandemic at hindi ininda si Corona. Corona lang yan. LGBTQ plus tayo. Oo. Yeah. Asa inyo ang totoong Corona. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> so, uh, looking to the comments, people are saying, wow, sana all. <laughs> and, and amazing job to uh, Kagawad Christine and the LGBTQ community of Barangay Bayamon. So, thank you very much for your service. Uh, let's go to Gaki next. Um, Gaki, you talked a little bit about the, you know, the, the industry being a little bit male dominated. But um, what was the most uh, surprising insight uh, that you found out about the industry after being in it for for a while now? Uh, basically, like um, I'm surprised by the fact that people are surprised that I'm a female, you know, in the industry. So. I, because like um, like uh, Doc Berry said and uh, Melai said, you know, like I've always had family support also. Um, like when I wanted to start riding motorcycles, my parents naman didn't say, oh, it's a guy thing. You know, it was yeah. really just go, yeah. go do it. Yeah. So, so I just started motovlogging and riding motorcycles just being me and uh, there and then it's surprising when people are like oh how how is it being in a male dominated i'm like wow it is male dominated that's surprising and yeah there and then like you'll never know i mean there's a lot of females who ride motorcycles again i have an all-female riding group and they all ride badass big bikes and yeah there that's, yeah actually you got that's you. the you most surprising tell us thing in my field Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about uh, Litos of Manila, your your female bike group. Like, how 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 did it start? Uh, are there are there lots of uh, badass females in it? There are super and a lot also from the LGBTQ plus community. So yeah, go girls. And um, um, we started. It's it's a database of women um, and 
we all just sign up on a website and it's it's an international franchise so wherever we go like for those who like to travel and ride elsewhere if you're looking for other females to ride with we just access this database yeah so but here in the philippines so um yeah we started it um i met some girls at motorcycle events and yeah surprisingly <laughs> there were women no and there and we were like come on let's put up a riding group na all female because there are a lot of uh, male groups and they want like to dis- you know not include the females because we ride slow or something but you know our girl group we're it's it's pretty cool and we've got nice big bikes and people don't think we can ride these things and we get comments like you know how did we afford these bikes if we must have wow. married like rich men or something like that and yeah i mean uh if you get to sit down and talk with uh, the group it's like you know they're all very strong women who uh, paid for their own motorcycles themselves yeah so Yes, yeah, surprising nice. that there's this whole stereotype that you know that it's just for guys because it was never really like that. Right, and and you never yeah. saw it as that because you grew up, you know, you're with your with your parents basically not yeah, giving you that mentality. Yeah. This is male dominated. Yeah, right. yeah. Very very cool. Uh, let's go to Mela next. Now, Mela, you work for Google, so do I. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I. <laughs> Obviously, I love working for Google, but um, I I would love to know what it is about Google's workplace culture, uh, especially when it comes to being uh, LGBT, that you find uh, you know that you find that is most noteworthy about about Google culture. Uh, how much time do we have for this? I know. I feel like <laughs> <a> whole hour. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I think the. The one thing that I really love that I got about Google is that um, respect for each other is a core value. So as early as um, new hire orientation, we already talked up, we, we already talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion um, because that obviously is a manifestation of respecting each other um, in the workplace. Um, one of my favorite anecdotes from um, from my um, new hire orientation in Singapore was um, day one palang when I got there um, they were giving out name tags to everyone um, to all the new hires right um, so apart from the names that we had to fill out in the, our name tags we were also asked for our preferred pronouns um, so at that point palang I really thought na na um, okay, Google is probably um, serious about their um, commitment to um, diversity and inclusion. So yeah, that felt really good. Um, so yeah, after, after the new hire orientation, um, during the course of your, um, of your first few months within Google, um, you get, we, we get mandatory training in, in courses like unconscious bias and bias busting um, so that um, all employees get to learn how to identify stereotypes, um, the ways it can manifest and you know, discuss how it counteracts inclusion. Um, mm. So these training sessions really just allow us to understand like how unconscious bias can cause us to overlook great ideas, undermine individual potential, um, and create a less than ideal work experience for um, for the Googlers. Um, apart from training, of course, um, Google also has all these very wonderful benefits um, that are very inclusive. Um, we have same-sex health benefits um, in Google. Um, so while, you know, um, normally, um, in, in the other companies, these are um, the, the health benefit is something that you can only get if you are a spouse. Um, but in, in Google, since we don't have same-sex marriages in the Philippines, um, we are able to um, enroll our partners um, even without marriage. Um, one other benefit that's really close to my heart is the trans wellness benefit. Um, you know, um, this allows me to get access to me- to health practitioners, medical health uh, practitioners, mental health practitioners <clears throat> who can help me in my journey 
um, I get access to hormonal um, therapy and I can also get affirming surgery. So this one is really something that I value um, as one of the benefits in Google. Um, one other thing cool. that we already talked about earlier um, was, so yeah, maybe maybe Doc Barry can... Um, <laughs> And work on me after of the course. COVID, <laughs> after this COVID right. situation. Yeah, <laughs> another Doc, Doc Berry. I've I've, I've, Doc I've gotten Barry you two patients. <laughs> I know two patients in after forty COVID. minutes. After COVID. Yeah, hey, yeah. I need to work. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then um, just one last thing. So this is something that I already mentioned earlier. So. Um, we have employee resource groups in Google. Um, we have Google, at, uh, sorry, Pride at, Google, Pride at Google and Trans at Google. So um, with these employee resource groups, um, I'm really just able to use my voice um, to, st um, to support the necessary conversations within the company, um, but at the same time, be able to contribute to our local communities um, through different initiatives that we have. Um, and I want to be able to discuss those um, with you later. We will talk about uh, Pride Ad and Trans Ad a bit later on. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go to Mikey. Hey, Mikey. Uh, hey. So you're yeah. So I, I really want to want to know like how has being a YouTuber or a YouTube creator uh, played a role in your coming out journey? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, like I said before, it was really the lifestyle vlogging channel because I run three. One is a channel about ants and then one is a comedy Filipino channel and then one was the lifestyle vlog channel. So I think I was able to not address my sexuality on the ant channel and on the um, Filipino comedy channel but the lifestyle vlog channel was really that kind of like unfinished business um, for me and you know, as time went on, uh, it somehow started to feel more and more safe. Oh my gosh, my parrot. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> right, Legaya? It's true, right? Um, and then um, some, yeah, just over time, I started to feel like, you know, somehow um, the energy I'm getting from my subscribers is we know, but it's okay. And then yeah. we we're just kind of like, you know, 2019 is the time we've we've bought a we're, we've bought a property together. You know, we're yeah. in our nest. Um, we have our pets, which are kind of like children. <laughs> so we were already in that zone of like we're building a family and a foundation for ourselves. Um, and so it just felt like it was time, you know, to to come out on that channel. Um, yeah. and it's funny because when we did it almost opened up this new energy of creation. It affected all my other channels somehow. I, we somehow yeah. became more creative. Um, you know, uh, we, after coming out, my next video on the Filipino comedy channel, for example, was Freddie Mercury, <laughs> uh, if he were Filipino, like, what would it be like? And it just, and RJ was um, also participating in it as my partner. And it was just really, really cool. We could be ourselves more. Um, so, you know, it's been great growing up on YouTube and that journey of coming out also was part of that journey. Very nice. You know, a lot of big YouTubers have used the platform to come out actually. So I'm very happy yeah. that, you're, you, that you've seen it as like a safe space uh, for you to do that. Absolutely. And our coming out video was also uploaded on YouTube. Very nice. All right, thank you. Uh, let's go to Doc Berry. So my question to you is, I've gotten you two clients in 40 minutes. Where is my commission? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, uh, your question is, uh, so you were, um, I think you, you said you were on your journey to becoming a doctor and you were also transitioning at the yes. same time. Two very challenging journeys, but you went through it at the same time. So yes. how, how has that changed your perspective about life? I mean, having to go through transition myself and also as a doctor, I've gained a whole lot of perspective in our transgender healthcare in the Philippines. And we have, I think we have improvements, but we're still a long way. And 
I have to say transition is not easy. And I think every transgender would agree with me, right? Malay, Christine, right? It's not yeah. easy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I mean, Doc, Doc Barry, yeah. if you don't mind, because uh, yeah. lots of people may not be aware of what a trans woman goes through in, a, in transitioning. Could you yeah. take us through that a, a little bit? Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Actually, when you transition, you, uh, there's actually a protocol for it. We follow a protocol that has been, that is actually being used by other countries already. Um, and we are hoping that we adapt the protocol here in the Philippines. I think we're starting to do it now. Uh, supposedly, um, as early as two years old, a child psychiatrist can already know um, if the patient, if the, if the child has an inclination to have gender dysphoria. And that's why in the United States or in some um, uh, Western countries, as early as pre-puberty, they're already given um, uh, pubertal blockers. Okay, wow. so they, they, they have okay. this um, barrage of different drugs that they use so that when the child reaches of age, um, when they decide to really transition, then they would go for the other hormones, then eventually they would go for the surgery. And that is all um, backed with good psychiatric evaluation and also good psychiatric care. Now, uh, transition, we, we see a lot of trans women, beautiful trans women and gorgeous trans men in our um, social media now, right? But, and we think that they're so lucky. But the truth is, it's really years of dedication. It is, um, hmm. It's not an easy thing to do. And it's, uh, I want to take this um, time to um, tell our viewers that transitioning really is very hard, especially on the beginning. It is such yeah. an emotionally laden phase of your life. Uh, try imagine, imagining waking up every day, looking at the mirror, and seeing a body that you're not happy with. It's like waking up with a bad haircut every day, right? And you try to change it. And that's what we do. We use tapes. We use, uh, of course, we use accessories because we would want to see ourselves in our bodies in such a way that it would conform to how we feel inside. And what makes it harder, especially for me when I was transitioning, is we don't know what to do and we don't know where to go if we need a consult. So we ask our older sisters what they do. So it's always anecdotal. Parang kung ano yung ginawa nila, Yun din gagawin ko. So it may be based on science, but it might not be necessarily safe. So yeah. without the proper support of family and friends also, that's why I'm taking this opportunity to tell the parents and the friends of early trend of young transgenders, without their support, transgenders in their early transition are very prone to a lot of psychiatric health issues. Mm. Um, they're very prone to depression. I, for one, had episodes of maldepression just because I'm distressed looking at myself every day that I look like more of a male than a female. Mm. Yeah, I had bouts of eating disorders just to make myself thinner and leaner and leaner to be more feminine. So, maraming nangyayari when it comes to um, when you begin your transition. And a good family support and friends and support from your friends would really mean a lot. So, Currently now, I think there had been um, improvements because now I'm seeing a lot of doctors who are catering to the needs of our transgender um, sisters and brothers. Now we have psychiatrists who deals with transgenders here in the Philippines. We also have a number of endocrinologists who caters to the hormone replacement therapy of our transgender sisters and brothers. And always, and as always, we have uh, board-certified plastic surgeons who can help you improve surgically uh, your bodies to, so that it will conform to how you feel inside. Uh, it's, good, uh, it's good to know that Google, um, as Mele mentioned, that um, they have these benefits for their employees. However, the truth of the matter is that is not for the majority of, the, of our transgender sisters and brothers, that's not really an option or it's not, an yeah. it's not available. Um, I hope in the future it would be uh, part of our, of our um, universal healthcare. We are a long way to go, but I think we're slowly getting there. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you, Doc Barry. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to go to a little bit of a, a beauty pageant question. I know some of mm -hmm. you have experience and are excited for this. So here we go. So the question I'm asking all of you, 
and uh, maybe I won't give you a 30 second timer, but feel free <laughs> to answer the way you want to. Uh, so the question is, how were you able to use your position to empower or inspire the LGBTQ community? So that's the question. So again, the question is, how are you able to use your position to empower or inspire the LGBTQ plus community? Let's go to candidate number one, Miss Christine Ibardolaza. Okay, being the first ever trans woman elected in the position here in the city, it, I think it's already an inspiration to everyone that it could open up doors that a trans woman like me could serve and could lead a barangay here in our city. So, ako mismo inspiration ako. And for me, I think the greatest inspiration is the trans women, uh, or I should say the LGBT community who is here in our city, na talagang they could look up to, na meron silang uh, magiging parang role model. And kaakibat po nun, kailangan galingan ko. Kasi um, ka ako yung nag-open ng doors eh. So, a little bit pressure in my part, pero, but that's okay because this is for the community. Yun po. Very nice. Very nice. So I agree. And representation is so important because I think our generation maybe didn't grow up with as many role models of what career we can pursue being an LGBTQ yes. member. Maybe it was very sort yeah. of limited. But now that we're in this generation where it's a, a little bit more accepted, now we're able to enter into careers where we can be role models mm -hmm. to other people, especially young LGBTs. So uh, very, very, uh, definitely agree with that answer. So let's go to Gaki next. How about you? How are you able to inspire and empower the community? Hey, thank you for that question. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I think that, you know, by doing what it is and, you know, doing the best at what you're doing. So like, if I, I think that, like by continuing to create these videos and vlogs and I'm open about my sexuality on the videos, I'm open about my relationship. And, you know, I guess like um, by just showing people that I'm doing this and I'm not letting the, the gender discrimination stop me from doing things, I hope it inspires people also to just do what it is that they want to do and not think that, you know, it's for boys or it's for girls or like you can't do it just because if you're trans, like, you know, trans women, you're all welcome to join my writing class if you want. Yeah. <laughs> and, Christine, let's and join go my, for it. Christine. Join, my, go, Christine. Yeah. <laughs> join my female after, writing after group. To, uh, after to ask Gap, is there any trans woman in your group or in one riding a big bike, trans woman like us? I don't know of anyone locally, but I'm aware that there are quite a few internationally. So maybe wow. you can be the first. Hey, you can <laughs> be the first. Yeah, again, <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Us. Thank you so. Yes, thank you so much, Gaki. Uh, let's go to, to Mela. So Mela, I know you've been itching to talk about Pride Ad and Trans Ad. Uh, so yeah. what are these uh, employee groups about? Okay, um, so yeah, um, how do we use or how do we empower um, the community? So with um, Pride at Google and Transit Google, uh, we are able to um, impact our internal organizations through different um, activities that we that we spearhead. Um, we conduct training sessions. So for example, earlier today, we rolled out Trans 101 um, for mm -hmm. Asia Pacific. So we had more than 100, um, 100 Googlers who dialed in today um, who wanted to learn more about, um, about trans, trans um, journeys. Um, and then within our local communities, we are also able to help and empower different sectors. Um, in the past, I think you'd be familiar with this, Jolly. Um, we partnered with YouTube um, to put together a seminar that's specifically for LGBTQ plus owned um, small and medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also made a sizable donation in the past to one um, non-government organization so that they could build an HIV testing center. Um, more recently though, um, so last Saturday, we partnered with Pride at Tech. Um, it is a group of LGBTQ plus members and allies from the tech community in the Philippines. Um, we put together this um, 
virtual march um, that was, of course, supposed to, um, to replace what was supposed to be um, another record-breaking Pride Parade, right? So since we couldn't do that, uh, we had March from Home. So Pride March from Home was the project. Um, the project was powered by Google Maps and will benefit the LGBTQ plus community members whose lives and livelihoods were severely affected by um, the COVID situation. Um, we are also looking um, to help another NGO this year. So we want to make another donation. So um, we'll see how that goes. All right, very cool. Nice. Uh, nice. Mikey, what about you? How are you able to use your position to empower or inspire people? Uh, uh, yeah, well, the way I see it, uh, there were two ways. Well, I love coming out was sort of my way and my partner's way of breaking stereotypes because uh, just growing up I felt like if you were bisexual or gay there was like a certain look and a certain yeah. way you act um, certain things you would be interested in like beauty pageants <laughs> um, but I, I don't know I just I, I felt like you know I told my partner I said you know if we come out maybe we can introduce to others a different kind of uh, same sex uh, sort of like thing. Uh, you know, like we're, we're both, I'm not gonna say we're both macho, we both have masculine and feminine qualities. Um, but at the same time, we both, people were like, okay, who's the who's the wife and who's the guy? Like who's the- <laughs> Right, exactly. Right, that's always, a question. <laughs> always I'm like, a question. no, 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 we're both. <laughs> You know, and then that's okay too, you know. Um, so we felt like we needed to break that stereotype once and for all. Um, so, and it actually inspired a lot of bisexuals like us or masculine um, homosexuals uh, who identify as male, but were scared that they were, they were going to be pegged in a certain, you know, a certain- Stereotype. Like, stereotype, yeah. 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 Um, so that was one thing. And then also, um, we feel like us coming out could show the younger generation who were who are hiding. You know, my yeah. partner and I were hiding into our thirties. Can you believe it? <laughs> um, and uh, so we wanted to show them that you know you could still succeed in life, um, come being your authentic self. You know, we thought we would lose again uh, endorse product endorsements, um, work lose uh, support, but no, like everything's kind of the same, um, yeah. only more free. So we wanted to show that as well um, on our lifestyle channel, our daily vlog, that like everything is cool. We're not, you know, it doesn't have to be a dark, dirty secret. You know, it's actually right. cool and chill and normal and okay and pure, yeah. All that good stuff. That's great, I feel that's cool. You. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, a, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think you you highlighted you know the need for education especially uh, like like for example I think people may not necessarily know the difference of sexual orientation and gender identity and gender expression and how a person can Correct. have a mix of these three different things. Correct, and also like emotional attraction. That's another element yes. to it. Like right, it's true. Uh, you could be emotionally mm -hmm. attracted to a certain uh, gender or sex. Um, you know, and it's just, it's a very big science, a more yeah. complex science that I think should be taught at an early age. That's just my opinion. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, with someone who has a lot of young followers, we want, uh, I wanted to introduce that to our younger audience that it's kind of cool, it's okay. You know, we're, there are different kinds of us, LGBT. Yeah. Um, that's why we're a rainbow, right? We're not yeah. just- yeah. Yeah four colors, right? We're just a bunch of like various colors. So <laughs> the whole spectrum. That's yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. That's right. Uh, let's go to, let's go to Doc Berry. So Doc Berry, how have you used your position to empower or inspire the community? I think being a trans woman and a plastic surgeon, I think I am in the best position to champion transgender health in the country. Uh, hindi natin pwedeng baliwalain 
yung katotohanan that we have transgender Filipinos that need our expert medical and surgical care. Without professional help from doctors, actually, maabilidad tayo eh. So these, these transgender will try to look out ways, uh, will resort to regimen for transition that might be actually risky for their health. I think it's about time that we offer a multidisciplinary center-based approach for our transgender sisters and brothers, which is actually based on established protocols that is being followed by other countries, uh, other Western countries. We still don't have an established um, gender reassignment surgeon in the Philippines. And if all goes well, I think I plan to subspecialize in that field. So in the future, I can offer that service to our countrymen. Uh, so for my transgender sis brothers and sisters, I applaud your courage and your strength for taking control of your body, but there is a safe way to transition and you just have to consult us. Very nice. I'm sure now you've gained even more patience. From <laughs> that call. <laughs> <laughs> so, very, very cool. Thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm, I'm learning so much from this journey. I think sometimes there's a misconception that just because you're a gay man, a lesbian woman, et cetera, et cetera, that you know the journey of everyone else in the LGBTQ community. And that's just not true. Everyone has their own journey. And so yeah. it's very enriching to hear each other's uh, stories. So thank you so much for today so, uh, so far. But we're coming to almost the end of this. I feel so bad that we're ending this because I'm having so much fun. But we're going to do a, a fun little activity. It's called um, I, it's called the Real Deal, and it's sort of a it's sort of have you ever, but with a twist. So how it works? Uh, Mike is hearing about for the first time. He's nervous. <laughs> so how it works <laughs> is that uh, we're going to give you guys a list of six movies. Um, all you have to do is choose uh, one movie from that list, and then it will have a corresponding have you ever question behind it. And then all you have to do is say, if, you, if yes or no, you've been in that situation. And if you'd like to explain, you can. Otherwise, you can just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so let's do it. Let's, let's start. So, of course, our guinea pig is always Christine. So, man, Christine, <laughs> let's show them. So, your yes. movies are, your movies are Carol, Milk, Moonlight, The Danish Girl, The Love of Siam, and blue is the warmest color. So those are your six films. So which one would you like to choose? I'm single right now, so I'll to choose The Love of Saya. The Love of Saya, <laughs> oh, okay. Is that, is that a call for, okay. So everyone, it's just so you know. <laughs> Kagawad, Christine is single yeah. at the moment. Actually, in, interesting. With 30K files of Google. <laughs> so here you go. The, the question is, have you ever fallen in love with someone who is several years younger than you are? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Do you want to give an explanation or do you want to just leave it at that? Um, yes, I did. I fell in love with a younger man. And mm -hmm. I think it is not the basis of falling in love to a person because I know that it develops naturally. Yeah. It, it's innate, yeah. it develops naturally. And I think there's nothing wrong with falling in love with a young man or an older person from your age. It doesn't matter. As long as he accepted you for who you are and for what you are, then that's a celebration of love. Yeah. All right. I have a yeah. question for Christine. Age is yeah, just a ahead. number. As, Christine, do you have yeah. a, like an age limit? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> do, you have, do you have an upper and a lower limit? Yeah, an, an upper and lower <laughs> limit. How low can you go? <laughs> oh. I could go as low as 24 years old. Oh, 24? Okay. All right. Okay. And 24? As old as, 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 old old as what? As old as, as old as 65. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It's a, it's, a, it's a very wide net. Okay. okay. So if yeah. you're... If you're a man between 24 and 65, Kagawa Christine. I have friends. I have friends. Ready. <laughs> oh, good. Fantastic. Oh, thank you, Gaki. I love you. <laughs> Speaking of Gaki, you are next. So your remaining films are Carol, Milk, Moonlight, 
the Danish girl, and blue is the warmest color. So which one would you like to choose? For sure, Carol. Love that movie. Carol. All right. So your question is, have you ever been in love, sorry, been in a love triangle, wow, where you had to choose between one or the other? Wow. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Ooh, juicy. <laughs> Would your choice, if you'd like to expound or not, I'm not going to force it. No, it was just some high school thing. Nothing serious. Uh, so uh, just okay. keeping it. Uh, yeah. You know, these things <laughs> right. that happen in high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right. Let's go to Melai next. So four movies left. You've got Milk, Moonlight, The Danish Girl, and Blue is the Warmest Color. Which one would you like to go for? The Danish Girl. The Danish Girl. Let's go for it. So your question is, have you ever done something bold or daring for your current or a former partner? Mm -hmm. I don't have a current partner and I don't have a former partner. Oh. Oh. Most. There we go. Oh, wow. I have wow. friends. So, <laughs> yeah. If Gaki has friends, I'm accepting referral. <laughs> there you go. Gaki, I feel like you're going to be very, very busy for the coming weeks. <laughs> Let's go to Mikey. So, Mikey, you have two movies left. You've got Milk okay. or Blue is the Warmest Color. Which one would you like to go for? Okay. Well, I've never seen those movies. So, um, let's go with Blue is the Warmest Color because I like blue. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, your question is, have you ever actually gotten into a relationship with someone you met at a Pride March? Um, no, I can't say I have. No. Um, I've only been in a serious relationship with a small number. And my I've only been to a couple Pride Marches in my life. One of them being yeah. last year's Manila Pride, which was fantastic. By the way. It was. Um, but uh, no, I can't say I have. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that brings us to Doc Berry, who has okay. no choice yeah. <laughs> but to go for milk. Milk. Okay. So uh, your question is, have you ever thought of getting into politics? Interesting. Uh, to represent the LGBTQ plus community. Like, would you join uh, Ma'am Christine in her, uh, know, in her political career? Her have you ever thought of it? <laughs> Actually, I don't. I think I, I always believe that each person has their own passion. Yeah. Uh, I think my passion is with the medical field. Um, I think maybe Christine can do a better job in, <laughs> in <laughs> going to politics, but I nev it never crossed my mind. Yeah. Okay, very cool. All right. Uh, I have one final question for everybody. I know I think we talked about representation earlier and how awesome it would have been if, you know, as, as young LGBTQ plus people, we had role models to look up to and, uh, and stuff like that. So I think now that we have an opportunity to be that for, for other people, I guess if you could speak to uh, any young, our young LGBTQ plus members uh, today, whether they've come out or not, or maybe they have recently come out, but ha are still sort of finding their place in the world. Uh, what advice would you give them to either live a happy life or be successful in their chosen fields? So that is a question. Let's start once again with Miss Christine. Okay. When I was a young kid, when I was in my elementary years, I told my mom, um, I think I gay. And my mother lied me with a poker face. And during my high school years, I once again told her, Mom, I'm gay. And then this time she answered me with a very smiling face. And when I reached my college in Politi Polytechnic University of the Philippines, and because I'm from Aklan, so I came here to uh -huh. Manila, so many people, trans women, and I like uh, the energy of trans women. So I told my mom, I think I'm really gay. This, she told me that, um, anak, kahit ano ka pa, noon din tanga. So from that story, I would like to tell LGBTQ plus young girl generations that be true to yourself. Aside from being true to yourself, is that be true to your parents 
because my mom was the first to know that I am gay and she was the first to accept me for who I am, what I am. And I think a uh, strong fan board is very important. And kaakibat ng pagtanggap ng aking nanay ay talaga namang ginalingan ko sa abot ng aking makakaya para maging siya. And by that, I really love my mom. And ang advice ko talaga sa mga batang LGBTQ plus is that be true to yourself. Because by being true to yourself, people accept you for who you are and for what you are no matter what. There Thank we you. go. Sabi nga ni RuPaul, if you can't love yourself, yeah. how the hell are you going to love somebody else? Yeah. True. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. 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 All right. Let's go to Gaki. What about you? What is your advice for our young LGBTQ plus uh, community? Yeah, I hope that, you know, um, not don't let the gender identity or any gender issues get in the way of what you want to do. So, you know, just do it. Uh, you keep doing you and I'll keep doing me. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. Yeah. There, um, I, I hope that, you know, uh, that people just follow what they want to do as long as your intentions are good and, you know, you're, you're not stepping on anybody in the process. Keep doing you. Very nice. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, Gaki. Let's go to Melai. What is your advice, Melai? Um, to the young ones, I really just want to say um, never let anyone tell you that you do not belong in a certain space. Um, blaze a trail if you need to. Um, tear down walls, break barriers. Um, you can do it. Very nice. Thanks, Melai. Mikey, you have lots of young fans. What would you yeah. want to tell all your young subscribers? Well, first of all, oh, it's such a long journey of discovery. So take your time. I finally mm-hmm. into my own in my like mid to late 30s. Um, so yeah, it's going to be confusing, but don't beat yourself up. It's kind of a long journey. And um, just a message to those who might be in the back, like people who were like me uh, like a year ago, as early as a year ago, um, and who might be dating someone secretly. Um, I, my message to them is um, when I came out with my partner, well, okay, first of all, before we ever came out, we were okay with with just hiding it. We're like, okay, it's none of their business. We don't need to mm. come up, you know? We were we just got so used to that. And then when we finally came out, we were surprised to realize that it was like this new world had opened and yeah. we were just dating again. Cause like we could do certain things that we couldn't really do, like take pictures together when we would travel or, um, you know, like, have our hands over each other, things like that. And, you know, I would go to shoots and the makeup artists would be like, who's your friend, you know? And I'm like, oh, he's my boyfriend. And like, we would just like that. And they were like, oh, you know what I mean? It, we were yeah. no longer a dirty little secret. And so my advice to those who might be closeted, who might have a secret lover, if you really want <laughs> to experience the true, true love, and you respect your love, be authentic. And you will, it, somehow it like completed everything. We thought we were complete now, but no, when we came out, it just was like completion to like this whole new level. Um, so yeah, my advice is take your time, but if you can, and if you treasure your love with your special someone, perhaps you might consider coming out in your agenda. Very nice. Beautiful. Let's go, last but not least, to Doc Mary. Uh, my message to the younger LGBTQIA plus um, Filipinos out there, gender will not and should not define your career choice and options. No matter if you're cisgender or transgender, no matter what the stereotypes are for your profession, you can always succeed if you put your heart into it and you, you are passionate about it. So stand your ground, take your space, and fight for what you believe what is right, and fight for what you love. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have learned, thank you so much. I have learned so much in the last hour from all of you guys. 
Uh, and I hope everyone watching uh, has learned a lot as well. Uh, so uh, big thank you and big virtual hugs to all of you. I wish I could hug all of you in, in the real world, but virtual hugs for now. Thank you once again to our wonderful panelists, uh, Christine, Gaki, Melai, Mikey, and Doc Berry. Thanks so much. Thank thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, we hope thanks these for conversations. Us. Yeah, uh, we hope these conversations don't end with Pride Month because these are very real everyday issues that our LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters face. So let's keep pushing for equality and inclusivity. Uh, once again, my name is Jolly Status. If you would like to be part of the conversation, make sure you use the hashtag hashtag Pride with Google in all your social media. Again, that's hashtag Pride with Google. Please take care, stay safe, happy Pride, and good evening, everyone. <laughs>